Hey guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Restorations. Check it out. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to maintain your Mitsubishi Mirage. We're going to do an oil change. You're not going to need a whole lot to do this oil change. A little over three quarts of oil, that'd be 0W20 synthetic oil. You're going to need an oil filter. I recommend getting genuine oil filters. The part number is MZ690072. And you'll need a crush washer. These are a little different than your average copper or aluminum washer. They're like hollow and they crush when you put them on, so they're not really great for reusing. Can you get away with reusing the one you have? Yes, but you shouldn't do it more than maybe once, okay? All right, well, the first thing we're going to do is get our car ready. Now, I'm going to be using a lift, so it's easier to film, really, and it's easier on my back, but you certainly don't need that. The things we need to do up top, well, let's take a look. All right, here we are up top on the engine. And the very first thing you're going to want to do is unscrew your oil cap, right? When you do that, leave it on there. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to pull that dipstick up. That's going to remind you that your car doesn't have any oil in it, in case you get distracted while we're doing this job. This is to allow airflow to allow the engine oil to drain quicker. And this reminds us there's no oil in it. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is get underneath it. Okay, so here we are underneath the car. Again, you don't need to jack your car up as high as I have mine. I just happen to have a lift and I'm going to use it. But you can usually get away with just jacking up one side just enough so you can get access. That right there is your oil pan and that right there is your drain plug. Now, it's probably not a bad idea. I should have mentioned this at the start that you should warm up the car a little bit before you do this. If the car is cold, if it's the middle of winter, that oil is gonna be really thick when it comes out. Also, some of the solids that may have accumulated over the last 5,000 miles will have settled to the bottom of the pan. It may not drain out. This car has been run. I just pulled it in. And so we're ready. It is a 17 millimeter. You can use a wrench or a ratchet. And you're going to break that loose. If I can get out of the way here. There we go. And once you have it started, I'm going to lift mine up just so I don't make a god-awful mess. Now, this thing is somewhat messy regardless, but... Go ahead and drain that into a bucket. Again, it's only three quarts and a little, so it's, it's not like it's going to be a ton of fluid coming out of here. But still, you don't want to create an EPA hazard here or anything like that. So you can see the oil coming out now. No sense in rushing this. You know, at a dealership or at a shop, if you were to take this in to be worked on, they're in a hurry. So oftentimes, they don't drain all of the oil out of the pan. They call it good enough when it starts to dribble. But we have all the time that we need here when we're doing it for ourselves. We're going to take better care of our cars when we do it ourselves. And so I'm just going to let this drain for a while. So while that finishes draining, we got to take that little silver washer off. Sometimes it's just a matter of taking your finger and picking at it. Other times, because it is so crushed, it'll take a little screwdriver and you'll have to pry it off of there. And I've got the part number for those replacement washers. The part number for that is MD. 050317. I bought a 10 pack of them for like six bucks on eBay. It's not a bad investment. I think it was like, you know, six dollars. So, I mean, that's less than a buck a pop, right? Cool. Let's take care of swapping that over. And hopefully you can see this, but here is the original washer. You can see, I don't know if you can, but I hope you can crushed completely flat. It looks like a regular copper or aluminum washer at this point. These washers are a double walled design, so they're actually two washers like welded together or pressed together. And when you put this back on, it's going to crush. So that's why I say these are kind of a one-time deal. All right, if you look, guess what? Our oil is down to Maybe a few drips a minute, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to take my new washer and put it on my drain plug. And I'm going to just wipe off the area in case there's any road debris on there. I want a nice, good, clean mating surface. And I'll screw this back in by hand. And then tighten it back down. And you just want it tight 
plus a teeny bit. You're trying to crush that washer, but you don't want to go crazy on this. You'll strip out the drain plug or the pan, and that would be a big problem. All right, with that out of the way, the next spot, and it's really hard to see. I'm going to try to get the camera up underneath so you can see it, but you won't be able to see it while I'm putting my hand on it. Right there is our, is our oil filter right there. And it's up in there. They gave us a nice cutout here, and they have this uh, plate right here that's protect the starter, but it also funnels this oil, and a lot of times oil comes out both here and here. You see that both there and there. So I am going to get a couple of rags in anticipation of that mess happening. And then I'm going to move my drain over like so. And we're going to give it a shot. Sometimes these boogers are on there. Other times they come off fairly easily. Just can't get a great angle with your hand to get the strength you need, but eventually it comes and it has started to. So I'm gonna unscrew it a little bit and I'm gonna back away and you can see it's starting to drain out. So again, not in a hurry, trying not to make a god awful mess. So I'm gonna let that drain for a little while. There we go. We'll just let it do the same thing. We're gonna let a lot of that drain out. That'll cut down the mess on us and on the floor of our shop or our yard or wherever we're doing this. And look at that. So it's down to a bare minimum. I am gonna take a rag. I'm gonna grab that oil filter. and I'm gonna finish unscrewing it. When I do, I'm gonna tilt the part up. I want the bottom down and the top up. That'll also reduce the amount of mess we make. There we go, like so. And then I'll let that drain here for a minute. There is one thing you have got to check on your old filter before you install your new filter, and that is is the gasket on there and here is our gasket right here it's a rubber gasket if that's not there if you can't see it it's stuck up there and you're going to want to make sure you get that off because if you don't you're actually going to end up having a massive oil leak when you try to start the car and you may actually damage the engine all right while that continues to finish draining Let's take a look at our oil filter. All right, here's the oil filter I got. It's a genuine Mitsubishi. There's actually two filters that fit this. There's a shorter one and a longer one. Extra filtering capacity and extra oil capacity. That's a good thing. So I'm going to use this one. It is perfectly good for the Mirage. I'm going to open it. It also has an anti-drain back. That means that when you shut the car off, the oil doesn't drain out of this and back into the engine. If you look, this O-ring has a grease on it. It's already greased. If you're buying an aftermarket, it'll probably just be a, a, a non-greased and you'll want to take a little bit of oil and wipe it around the threads and wipe it around that. I'm going to do something else. This is not necessary, but it sure makes me feel a lot better. That's going to be an empty cavity and that's going to mean that there's going to be a moment when I start this car that there's not going to be any oil pressure. You don't want direct metal to metal contact, even if it's just for a second. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to fill it up a little bit with some of my oil. You don't have to go all the way to the top because a little just spill out. But if you can get even some of it in there, well, think of what you're doing. You're helping your car during that crucial first few seconds not to be starved for oil. After all, we're trying to maintain our car, not ruin it, right? So I'll fill it up, and you'll see when I fill it, it'll overflow here in a second. But if you give it a second or two, it's going to soak into that filter. It's just a paper filter. You see that? And so now if you look into it, it's already more than halfway down. So I'm going to do that once or twice here until it's about three quarters. You're not going to have people doing this for you at the dealership or at an independent shop either. This is something that if you care about your car, this is why you should do your own work. Time is money at a shop. It's not that mechanics are trying to screw you over, but the system is screwing them over. Every day they're supposed to get more and more stuff done in less and less time if they want to make good money. And in order to do that, that means they don't have time to sit here for the extra 60 seconds that it took me to do that. And that is why these problems occur. Okay, everything is pretty well oiled up. We're ready to go and stick it back into the place. I'm going to take a rag, just wipe the area out where it drains. 
Again, I'm trying to make sure that I haven't created a mess. It's going to be a problem later on. Then I'm going to take my filter and face it upright, slide it up into it. That oil you see leaking there is the oil that I put in. Some of it came back out. I may have overfilled it a smidge, but it's still worthwhile to do that. And of course, we'll clean all this up again when we're done. So as far as tightening up your oil filter, this is a trick. You can't use a torque wrench on it. You certainly don't want to use an oil filter wrench when you're installing an oil filter. But what you do want to do is tighten it until it gets hand tight. And then you want to turn it about a quarter to a half more. You don't want to overdo it because then the next time you go to take it out, it'll never come out of there. And I've had to deal with that where they're just stuck on there and they'll actually break. But you do want to turn it until it's snug, right? You don't want to have to apply a ton of force, but you'll know when it stops moving under normal pressure that you're good. And now we're going to lower it down. It's time to put fluid back in. And look at that. We're almost done and we haven't hardly gotten started yet, right? I don't know if you've been keeping track, but so far the only tool we've needed is a 17 millimeter wrench or ratchet. And that's pretty much how easy it is to do this job. No covers need to be removed, no special tools, no excessive anything. I love it. Now, if you have steadier hands than mine, you don't even need to use what I'm going to use next, but that's a funnel. If you are going to use a funnel, be sure to wipe it out and get anything that might be in there out of it because we don't want cross contamination. The idea behind this job was to get fresh oil in it, not contaminated oil. I'm going to lay that in there. Now, this calls for 3.2 quarts. However, I have found three quarts is usually plenty. We can run it and we can double check it. But I'm going to go ahead and add my three quarts of 0W20. I'll make a separate video about this, but you may notice as I use this oil that I'm using Supertech or Synth, yeah, Supertech. That's Walmart's brand. So why would a mechanic who loves his cars use such cheap oil? Well, the truth is Supertech is actually the same stuff that you find under about 20 different name brands, Penn's oil, Castor oil. There's so many different brands of oil that are literally pumped out of the same factory. And there's actually a way to look on the bottle itself and it'll have a code somewhere on it of what factory it came out of. And so you can know exactly what other oils were coming out of that factory. But independent tests have shown that this synthetic SuperTech is actually really good stuff. It claims a 10,000 mile oil change. I claim you're insane if you do that. Do a 5,000 mile oil change on your cars. Your cars will love you and they'll last a long time. All right, I'm gonna take that out and I'm going to put my cap back on. And hey, we got oil in it, so it's also safe to push our oil dipstick back in there. I'll get this out of the way. I'll open up the garage door and we'll fire it up. We're going to let it run for about 20 seconds and make sure there's nothing leaking. We'll shut it off. We'll let it sit for about 20 seconds and then we'll check the oil level to make sure everything's good. This didn't take any time, did it? All right, so that's a good sign. Nothing's leaking and we're going to give it about another 10 seconds here. I'll go ahead and pull my dipstick out. You do want to wipe it down. And we let the engine sit for a bit. All right, it's been enough time. We'll go ahead and insert our dipstick in here. Make sure it's pushed all the way down. Pull it back out. And take a look. And it's perfect. It's just at the upper line, right where I want it. That's awesome. All right, my friends. Well, that's it. You now know how to change the oil on your Mitsubishi Mirage. This qualifies for everything from... 2014 all the way to 2024 and hopefully beyond. I guess that'll do it, my friends. Take care.